James Lynch here from Middle Easy. Happy to be joined by Patty Pimblett, who's finally going to be making his UFC debut on September 4th at UFC Fight Night. Patty, how's it going, man? What is happening? Thank you for having me, fella. I'm good. That's good to hear. Like to get you in a good mood. Um, first off, just, uh, you know, how excited are you to finally get the debut? I, I know you signed with the UFC back in March. I imagine they wanted to get you on the London card. Was that sort of the idea? And I know the card has since moved to Vegas. Yeah, that, I think that was the plan, to be honest. He wanted me in London because obviously when I walk out, lad, with fans, it goes, it goes absolutely bananas. So I think he wanted to save me for my debut on a London card, but obviously it's just not meant to be. So we're, we're heading over to Vegas for the debut. Yeah, how excited are you to fight in Vegas? That's uh, I know for a lot of fighters, that's like a milestone for them. Yeah, I can't wait to be honest. It's gonna be it's gonna be brilliant. I've always said for years, uh, some of my friends have been to Las Vegas on holidays and stuff, and I've always said I'm not going to Vegas until I fight there, and it's happening. It is. Uh, there's been a lot of comparisons throughout your career to Conor McGregor. Do you like that, or is that something you embrace, or is it something you're kind of tired of hearing? Um, I'm I'm not too fussed. You know what I mean? People can compare me to him if they want. It's uh, it's completely up to them. It's people's opinions. They can they can say whatever they like. But I'm my own man. You know what I mean? And I think I'll prove that when I actually have my first fight and I get on the mic. Connor made a lot of bold predictions earlier in his career. Are you going to do the same thing, or are you just going to see how this fight goes and sort of take it from there? Oh no, this this dude's getting finished in two. Like definitely <laughs> didn't he's even not, hesitate. I love it. That's perfect. That's perfect. No, he's, he's not getting out the second. That's if he's lucky to get out the first. To be honest. Yeah, and uh, we'll get into the matchup in a sec. Uh, just you know, quickly on McGregor, um, what have you learned a lot, you know the most from him? Obviously, he sort of set the blueprint of how to become a superstar in the UFC. Do you take a lot from what he's done, and maybe some mistakes that he's done as well too? Uh, yeah, for, you've got to always like look at the people who've come before you and see what they've done good and what they've done bad. Not just Conor, other people as well. You've got to like weigh it up and see what's good and what's bad. But I'm just going to be myself, man. That's simple. I'm, uh, I'm not trying to put on a persona. I'm not trying to be Colby Covington. I'm not trying to do nothing like that, lad. I'm just me, lad. What you see is what you get. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, there was talks of you signing with the UFC years ago, and, and you know that didn't end up happening, and now here you are making your debut now. How much of a different fighter are you now compared to when you know there was talks of you going to the UFC years ago? Well, yeah, I got, I got offered two contracts. I got offered one when I was 21. And I got off the one when I was 23 or 24. Yeah. And uh, I, I just knew at the time I was still a child. Um, I wasn't fully developed. I wasn't in my adult body yet. So I'm I'm so happy that I turned them off as down, to be honest, because if I would have took, took them, I, I would have ended up getting thrown to the wolves and I would have been beat up by men. You know what I mean? People yeah. who were much bigger than me, much stronger. And I'm glad I've waited till now because I'm, I'm fully developed and, People aren't going to like it when I get old of them in there. Yeah, and, and a new weight class, right? Not that new, but you're in lightweight now. You feel feel uh, really comfortable in that weight class now? You've been uh, had had a number of fights there now. Yeah, yeah, I feel comfortable here. Um, you know, I don't feel like I'm too small for the weight, but I don't feel like I'm big for the weight. Um, I, I still, you never know if, it, if it, the opportunity arises. I might still go down to featherweight in the future, but it's if I can make it healthily and not try and kill myself in the process. Yeah, need lots of time for that. Totally understand. Let's talk about your opponent, Luigi Vendermini, nine and two record. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Um, he's he's good first opponent. Know what I mean? He's not an easy fight. He's a tough first fight. But as I say, I'm 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 thinking about much bigger things than Luigi Vendermini. So I'm expecting to finish him in, in, inside two. I won't be I won't be happy with my performance if I don't finish him within two. Simple as that. Training partners, who are you getting to work with ahead of this fight? Um, uh, obviously all the lads in the gym, you know what I mean, uh, in Next Generation, lad, we've got a, a good crop of fighters, lad, uh, at the minute in the gym, we've got like the best set of lads we've ever had, to be honest, and within the next two years, there's going to be at least five of us signed to the UFC, at the minute there's only me and Molly, but I know for a fact, uh, it's going to be like SBG, lad, when Connor signed, I'm, I'm going to end up getting a few of the boys signed in the next few years, lad, and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be lively. But I've also uh, got some rounds in with uh, a lad called Alfie Davis yesterday from London Shoe Fighters. Um, and there's, I've got the Hardwick brothers coming down from Sunderland next week. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Like getting some rounds in with different people always helps. Uh, you mentioned Molly. That's Molly McCann, I'm assuming you, you train with, correct? Yeah, yeah, me big sister. Yeah, she's awesome. And I know Dakota Davich trains her, I believe, with you as well. Or I know she was doing some training with Molly too. Do you get to work yes, with her? She's a. Uh, um, She's been down doing some sparring with Molly, to be honest. Uh, the coach is good, man. 
very yeah. good, especially for the one and all pro. Yeah, it, it's it's really cool to see sort of the you know like you said your gym being the next you know uh, potentially the next uh, you know big thing. So that that must be exciting, man. Like being part of a gym and, and you're you know you're making your debut here of uh, being part of this new wave of of you know popular gyms that you know we're going to be hearing about in the few uh, next few years. Yeah, I've I've said it for years where um, our gym, our head coach Paul Rimmer doesn't get the credit he deserves. You know what I mean? For years he's been producing top level talent and. They always end up in different gyms and end up getting signed. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's not it's not fair on him, but I, I'm going to make sure he gets the recognition he deserves over the next few years. It's that simple. Uh, you mentioned or we talked about the 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 weight and all that. How's the weight cut going ahead of this fight? Oh, perfect. Woke up this morning, seventy six point six, lad. Only got less than six kilo to lose. That's uh, easy I've done, peasy. Uh, eighteen pounds overnight before, so this is not. And, and you said, uh, you kind of talked about it there, but you said, you know, featherweight is potentially an option, but you'd need some time. I imagine if you're out in Vegas, you'll probably talk to the PI and see if that's something that they would recommend you doing, I, I would think. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully. I don't know if they have in the Institute, but if they have in the Performance Institute, with, do they have a DEXA scan machine? I don't know. I've, I've only been there and I don't think I, I saw that when I was there, but I know that they do work with fighters to determine if like, you know, a particular weight class is good for you. So might as well, I'm sure you're going to be out there for the week, make a little pit stop, talk to them. Yeah, see, we're, see definitely, if that... we're definitely going to be in there getting some sane in it. But um, I know in the university in Liverpool, they have a DEXA scan machine because I've used it before. When oh, I, gotcha. When okay. Completed. So um, like when I fought Nad Naramani years ago, I went and got one when I was dry and they, they were flabbergasted that I was actually still alive. Never mind that I fought the next night <laughs> yeah, because uh, of how much weight that I drastically cut. But I'm hoping to get one of them over the next few weeks and I, I'm going to see what my bone density is, my muscle mass, my fat storage, and, and I'll see if it is healthy and possible for me to make 66 kilo again. If not, I'll be putting a bit of muscle on and I'll be staying at 70 kilo. Who's going to be making the trip down there with you uh, to Vegas? Uh, the, well, me and Molly are fighting, so we've got Paul Rimmer, our head coach, we've got Ella Sampson, our assistant head coach, Adam Venti, another one of our coaches, and then uh, Simon Audley, who's our Muay Thai coach. You called it there, there's going to be a finish. How does the fight end? How do you envision the fight playing out? Oh, lad, I've got so many different tools at my disposal at the minute. Um, you know, I want to showcase my striking, to be honest. I want to I, I want to stand, stand and have a statement with him. I want to, I want to show, because everyone just thinks I'm a grappler lad. I want to show everyone that I'm not just a grappler and that, like, my hands have got so much better where they've been focusing on them. I've always had my kicks, my knees and my elbows are there, but, and, you know, it'd be great to get a little flying triangle or something, wouldn't it? People love that shit. They do. Yeah, that's that's how you make a debut. That's how you get people's attention, right? So so there you go. Well, excited for the debut. Do you want to get one more fight in this this year? Would that be ideal for you? I, I know. Oh, I want to get two in. Two in? Okay, well, there you go. The, the Cerrone schedule. I like it. So Yeah, I've seen, um, I've seen they've just announced the Abu Dhabi on the 30th of October. I'd love <laughs> to get on Fight Island. There you go. I'd love to, like, I'd love to, I, I, I know for a fact after I win this fight, the UFC are going to want me back in that cage as soon as, because I'm going to make a statement. Pre-fight interviews, post-fight interviews, you know, I, I just can't help myself, lad. Stuff rolls off the tongue. The UFC are going to see my entrance and they are going to want my entrance with a crowd. And I know for a fact I'll have at least one more fight before the end of the year, if not two. Uh, a name you mentioned here is a fight you had, uh, Nad Nirmani. Um, is that a rematch you want in the UFC? You guys are in the same weight class. Um. I don't think he's in the UFC anymore, to be honest. Is he not? Did they cut him? Because I know he did. I he fought Grant so. Dawson, I, I'll right? I'll be honest. I, I have no idea. Uh, uh, but well, let's say he I, is still in the UFC. Let's say he's still on the roster. Is that a fight that interests you? Or are you looking even yeah, you know, more ahead I'd than that? Yeah, I'd love to get that one back. You know what I mean? Um, I lost a very close decision in that fight. And that was before he was getting tested by USADA. So I'd love to get that fight back. One thing I wanted to ask you about, um, I know you made some comments about Habib and his legacy, and I just wanted you to clarify that just so people kind of can get an understanding here. Um, I believe you said that he'd only beat three, diff- three you know, legit people in his career. Uh, what, what was sort of the, I guess I want to get your thoughts on, on Habib and, and his legacy. No, it's just, I, I just know what, to be honest. I, I looked at his record, and he's also beat Edson Barboza, even though Edson Barboza is now 145. When people mention Michael Johnson, I laugh at them because I'd beat Michael Johnson tomorrow. Um who else has he beat? Ally Quint is an okay win, but when it's on 24 hours notice, it's a little bit, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, I think Khabib's the 155 GOAT. I'm not saying he's not. He's the 155 GOAT, but he's not the greatest of all time. 
like who is who is, who is on your not. who is on your Mount Rushmore of of, of goats in your opinion? Uh, if we're going top five, I'm going John Jones, GSP, Mighty Mouse, Anderson Silva, Fedor. Glad you got the Fedor in there. Even though he's fighting this year, I think he probably shouldn't, but uh, still. No, accept- he shouldn't, but yeah. his running pride. Was I, I'm, gl- I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I feel like a lot of newer fans don't give Fedor the respect he deserves. No, they his, don't. His, his run in pride fans, is one of the best runs ever. Like, I don't care what yeah. people say. And there were there was definitely some enhancing uh, things going on in pride as well, and he still beat them. Yeah. Like, I had a few Khabib nuthuggers on my case when I mentioned Fedor. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, how can you mention Fedor above Khabib? And then I said, I said he beat Crocop, he beat Big Nog twice. Yeah. You know what I mean? When they were at the best, and some other like who else did he beat? People like Mark Coleman, and and people like that, and knocked Tim Sylvia out and Arlovsky in spectacular fashion, former UFC champions. Um, people don't give Fedor the, res- the respect he deserves. He was beating juice heads up. You know what I mean? He was beating steroid abusers up. People who were much bigger than him because he was a small heavyweight. And uh, I just don't think he got the he gets the respect he deserves. He is, it's definitely out of him and Stipe who, who are the best heavyweight of all time. But I'd go with Fedor. Yeah, and the great thing about Fedor, I mean, the, his presence. He'd walk in just like he was, you know, ready to go to bed or something. Like he looks so calm. And then you mentioned it there. He's not like a physically imposing guy. He just looks like a regular guy. But he went out there and he would knock guys out. And uh, it's such a it's such a crucial time in MMA because people forget Pride had the best heavyweights back in the day than the UFC. The UFC yeah, was struggling right. to. You know, do it, yeah, do it up. U- you know, UFC didn't have many heavyweights at all. It was all about the Pride heavyweight division. Yeah, uh, even like even people like Mark Hunt and that. Look at Mark Hunt in Pride. He was getting beat all the time, and then he comes to the UFC and started knocking everyone major out. Fights. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. You could sit there and talk Pride for hours. By the way, love uh, love that organization. Um, you're wearing the Chicago Bulls shirt. You mentioned you're a Michael Jordan fan. I imagine you've watched the Last Dance on Netflix, the documentary series. I've, I've started watching it. again. Oh, you just started! Wow, you're behind. You got to catch no, up. It's no, no, I've watched it all, but I've oh, started yeah? watching it again. Oh, it's a, I see. It's something I like to watch in fight camp because. MJ's just a fucking inspirational dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. That man is just unbelievable. Such a fierce competitor. I'm sure you can see a lot of yourself in him in, in the competitive. Yeah, that's that, that's why I like it. You know what I mean? I love it when he, I love it when in, in the last dance and he just goes, yeah, and he pissed me off, and then that was it. When someone pisses him off, that's it. You know he's gonna win. Yeah, little little fuse under him. Um, Couple more questions here. Uh, downtime. What's that looking like? I know you're busy training. Are you in? Are you a video game guy or TV guy? What do you What do you get up to? Uh, yeah, to be honest, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, where I'm, where I've been shocker in the gym all the time. I've hardly played on my Xbox the past few, like the past two or three months. But I've got a, I've got a Switch in that, and I get on it every now and then and play some Warzone and stuff like that. But at the minute, I just haven't got the time, and uh, I've just got a dog who's nice. just asleep. Asleep what, there like uh, that right now. It's it's a he, I imagine. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a big man. He's what's a his big name? Man. Uh, Lenny. <laughs> Lenny. Okay, where did that name come from? He, he's well away there, well away. Uh, I, I'll be honest. I was going. We were going to call him Benny because um, have you ever seen the film City of God? I've not, but uh, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, it's a Brazilian film. There's a there's a dude in it called Benny who's cool, and uh, we just end up going with Lenny for some reason. Okay. Dig it. That's cool. Um, and last question. I could be wrong with this. What happened to your Instagram? Well, at the minute, I'm I'm banned. Okay. What happened? Be disabled. It's like they're out for all the scousers. They don't have to tell you. The week now they're doing it to me. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I just I, I noticed I went a, to it and I didn't see anything there. It was. It I just, think it's just a forty-eight hour ban. To be honest, the best that be because I want my fucking Instagram back. But um, yeah, the. I just got got banned the other day. I think I think on Tuesday morning at nine a.m. it just went off on me, and it's saying like I've got a twenty-four hour review or something. But I'm I'm expecting it to come on by tomorrow morning. If not, I'm going to be getting on the UFC and selling them to sort of Yeah, hook them up. They can solve all that. They can get everything. Yeah, the best you know? lad. That's that's one of the benefits. I'm and, not losing 155,000 followers, man. I was gonna say, man, you built up an army there, more than an army, right? So, um, yeah, it'd be good to get that back. And they didn't give you a reason for why it was banned, or. Uh, well, yeah, they give me a reason. Um, there was, well, do you know much about English football? A little bit. You know, I'm like very casual with that. I'm, I'm, I'm Canadian, so hockey's our sport. But yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, take it. Well, report. there's um, someone, someone on my Instagram was giving me grief, saying stuff to me, and um, he was from, he's from Wales. He was from Bristol, and he was a Manchester City fan. So I told him to go and support his local team, and he started to try and give me shit back and forth. So. I put him on my story and give him some stick. 
and he must have reported me like a little bitch. Okay. Um, because he's reported me, I've been banned on it for two days. Okay. Well, there you go. Hopefully that uh, comes back. And I do have one more. It kind of ties into this whole thing. Uh, how are you dealing with the Habib fans? I know they were ruthless and came after you. And you mentioned the Georgian fans as well. Do you like that? Do you like kind of going back and forth with these fans on social media? Yeah, I don't mind. I, it's like a lot of people get on me and they, they love the fact that I interact with my fan base. And I interact with trolls as well. I, I don't mind. If someone wants to try and give me shit, I'll put you in your place. doesn't matter where you're from, who you are. I don't give a flying fuck. If you want to try and give me stick, I'll give you it back. As long as they're creative, like it's got to be something good. You can't just say you suck, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's got to be something funny, right? Don't you think? Yeah, it's got to be. If it's funny, I'll laugh at it. Know what I mean? Even when they're taking the piss out of me, if it's funny, I'll laugh. But some of the shit that's being sent is just, just stupid. Know what I mean? Because yeah. I said that about Khabib, I've been called a Muslim hater. Know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's no, I've seen, I've seen the ridiculous. comments. Anytime someone criticizes Khabib, it, they, they come out of the woodwork and yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, they just crazy. throw silly names out that have nothing to do with the conversation. Yeah, I'm with you there. Patty, thanks so much for doing this, man. We went way over time. Uh, anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to plug, I'll give you the last word. Um, well, I just want to, obviously, I want to thank all my sponsors. It was uh, always there for me, all my all my teammates in the gym, all my coaches, and uh, all my family and my fiance. Obviously, uh, without all them, I wouldn't be where I am today.